Tis the season for Ninja Turtles advent calendars. Let's see, day two. And what is it? It's Donnie! Hum, nom, 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 nom. Hey guys, it's me Gazbot again doing the 100 days of making comics challenge. This is day number eight. That's five plus three. Eight! Anyway, it's the first day of the second week of the challenge. And uh, I worked today about three hours, maybe just a hair under. Uh, I was hoping to do four or more like I did yesterday, um, but I got sidetracked by other things, including making new custom thumbnail header cards for this series, which hopefully will bring more viewers, or at the very least make me uh, make it obvious that it's part of a series, um, as opposed to just a bunch of random videos. I, I was guessing if you just look online and you just see my head in a bunch of them, that isn't good enough. And... Uh, yeah, I've gotten feedback from various people that uh, it'd be better to have custom thumbnails. So, but did that. But that took some time today away from making comics. I, sp I find a lot of time I'm spending nowadays uh, involves looking things up about YouTube or figuring out ways to post things better or camera stuff. Which, in the first video I even talked about, like, I don't want to spend a lot of time on the video aspect of it. But that's changing, and I kind of enjoy the whole YouTube thing, so whatever. It, it's become part of my work day now doing this sort of the sort of research and footwork to get these videos to look better, which obviously is still not succeeding. Uh, I think my camera's coming Thursday, uh, my new camera that is, so that'll help. Uh, meanwhile, what did I do today? Uh, I did some writing, uh, about an hour-ish, hour, hour and a half. Got, I think, six pages done, and uh, more importantly, I sort of got to the end, like a sort of a break in the story. Um, when I first started thinking about this story, uh, I had a bunch of different ideas for things I could do, um, like a, an animated thing or a comic book or whatever. Ended up deciding to do a comic because it's just more feasible as a one-man thing, and I can make some animated pitches and then nobody picks them up and whatever. I wanted to have a complete thing that I did myself so that if I never do anything else, ever, at least I have this. So a comic made more sense. And, and I love comics. It's not like it was second prize or something. And, uh, but I had a few different comic story ideas, and after talking with my wife and a few other people, it was decided that I should do one that is not an ongoing, it's a self-contained story, beginning, middle, and end, which makes sense, because it's not like I'm necessarily going to do the next Invincible or something, uh, which is an ongoing comic from Image Comics by Robert Kirkman, in case you don't know. Um, so the horror is the story I chose, and I imagine, originally conceived it being thicker than a normal comic, uh, sort of like a one-shot you know, uh, a, a thin trade paperback or or a thick regular comic. About 44 pages is what I was thinking. I'm not sure where I came up with that number, but I did. Um, now I am at page 23, completely scripted, with a bunch more that I still need to fill the script out in. And it feel, and that's roughly the length of a regular comic, 22, 24 pages, plus a bunch of ads. And so I feel like that is a good stop. And I kind of broke it that way so it ends where it would be a good end to an individual issue. So I think what I'm going to do proceeding forward is I'm going to break it up into uh, it was what would have been two issues in that format, but I'm thinking it's going to be more like three or four. Um, I don't know that I'll release it that way. I might just still do the whole book together. But whether or not I release it as individual issues first or just as a collection, having those sort of chapter breaks or, or pauses, sort of everything sort of coming to a certain point once every 22 or so pages doesn't seem like a bad idea anyway. Uh, and it gives me the flexibility to release them individually, but if I don't, I still feel like it'll just help with keeping the story on track and giving it a good sort of skeleton to hang on that I know, you know, one-fourth of the way through I'll be about here and, and so on and so forth. Um, so I got that done. Uh, I, I probably won't write uh, for a little bit um, the next day or two. I want to just give it a chance to simmer. I definitely won't write uh, work on the final script stuff. Uh, I may or may not even go back to rewrite that. My thought is that I will script everything out, and then go back, and when I'm doing the roughs and the thumbnails, which, again, I, I did a few the other day, but I haven't also been doing that, at that point will be the rewriting, rather than, like, rewriting it what would be third time just looking at the page, um, and since I am an artist, I have the luxury of not having to just be the writer, and I can get it right later. Um, other than that, I also did some design work. Uh, again, it was like an hour and a half or so on the designs in that ballpark. And uh, I, I designed, well, you'll see in a minute, but it's like six characters or so, uh, which normally, uh, some of the other characters I've done have taken an hour, hour and a half for one character, but I got all these guys done for a couple reasons. 
which I'll go into while we're watching the, the speed process video, which I will put up right now. So uh, one of the reasons I got so much done today is I had this initial sketch, which was on a piece of scrap paper. That's just some ballpoint pen. Uh, I have these kind of scraps on my desk all the time. You can see it was a bill or something that I blacked out. Uh, and I had the idea that that would sort of be her crew, uh, the main character's crew, uh, who's named Boots. Uh, that's her nickname, obviously. And so uh, here I just did a lineup with all of them. I want them to be different heights and builds and stuff. Uh, and that was a podcast I was listening to, which is uh, Chris Oatley's uh, called Paper Something. I'm going to put a box right here so that you'll know what it is. Uh, it was a good one on writing. I recommend it. I'll put a link in the show notes, too. Um, but anyway, so here you can see I sort of did a lineup. And... I've done this before with other projects. I, I don't know if like comic people normally do this. I, I feel like this comes from my animation background, and I don't know what that was. Uh, and that person on the right is supposed to be like a younger kid. They're all kids-ish, like late teens, early 20s, but that one is supposed to actually be like a kid kid. Uh, so mostly what I'm doing here is I was pretty happy with that rough sketch. I had to make up some details that I didn't have, but like the faces and stuff are pretty close to that original sketch. And I wanted them to all ha look different. Um, you know, I imagine them being parts of different subcultures or different backgrounds. And but yet they are all coming together uh, as friends and as part of this sort of little crew. Uh, and again, with fashion, it, my lack of fashion knowledge comes in handy here in that I don't want it to look like modern day Earth things. I want it to look plausible, but not exactly. Um, that guy, by the way, he looks like he has robot arms. Um, doesn't necessarily. Could be tattoos, could be a weird cosmetic thing he wears over it, or maybe the robot arms. I kind of just like the way it looks. And all of these characters are a bit more uh, cartoony and outlandish than the rest of the characters in the book. Like <laughs> This guy, I imagine, is being like their version of a hipster, and he's really into a uh, paddleball thing. Uh, and uh, <laughs> with his bare knees there. Yeah, so all these guys are more cartoony and outlandish than the rest of the characters in the book. And I'm not saying something because some of the other guys are kind of crazy too. But these are more, uh, I think of like a lot of older anime and even some more modern ones would sort of have very serious heroic characters and the side characters would be kind of goofy and, and uh, drawn almost in a different style. I didn't go that far, but I didn't go out of my way to make them be super realistic. Uh, you know, I let it be a little more cartoony. Um, so yeah. And uh, as always, I'm doing resizing even after the drawings and stuff. And uh, I liked the idea that sort of with one drawing, I kind of gave a bit of a personality to each one of them, too, because they're not going to get a ton of screen time, screen time being page time. Uh, and, you know, they're, they're not going to have a whole lot of dialogue or whatever. They're more, you know, background characters or, or tertiary characters, maybe. Um, so I wanted to convey a lot about who they might be just based on their appearance. Um, so, like I said, I wanted them all to look different. It's not like they, they're all part of a, the same, you know, sports team or something. Um, as far as their hairstyles, their clothing, everything else. But then, you know, also, like, you can see this girl is sort of like, what's going on? I've got attitude. i got questions. You know, she's she's not afraid to use her mouth uh, to express herself, or her hands, for that matter. Meanwhile, the dude behind, beside her, the really tall guy, he kind of has a blank expression, his arms flat at his sides. You get the impression he's sort of the, the strong, silent type. May or may not be stupid, but certainly isn't, you know, talking up a storm. Uh, and then this guy I'm working on here... I kind of wanted to make a little bit like a werewolf. Uh, he's not a werewolf, but I just sort of like, oh, what if it was a guy that kind of looked like he would turn into a werewolf, but he's just a guy. And then, again, going back to fashion, I was like, well, what if in this world one of the fashions is like multiple sleeves and weird little fringes? And that is sort of a backwards K, which originally was an X, but uh, I realized that I subconsciously was making it look like Cyclops's costume when Walt Simon syndrome in X Factor, uh, because that's my favorite costume. <laughs> so I changed it a little bit. And yeah, and gave him some, just like his sleeves had redundancies, I gave him redundant sort of wing flaps on his shoes. Uh, and then this was the kid. I might have to, when I get into really drawing, I'm probably going to have to mess with the proportions and stuff because I feel like she came out a little bit miniature adult. Um, I don't know, I'll have to look at it again, but I was just going for design at this point. So uh, I wanted her to be a little bit of a tomboy uh, and again, I'm probably never going to get into this story, but I have who she is in my mind. So she's wearing this big old coat. Maybe it's an army coat, maybe not. So like, where'd that come from? Is that her father's? Did she find it? Does she, you know, does she wear it 
because she wants to look cool and fit in. You know, she's got these big boots too. So we're, you know, those presumably came from some member of her family, or maybe she stole them off of a soldier to be cool with these guys. Um, but just something to make her look less like a regular little kid and more like someone that might actually hang out with these people. Uh, and then this girl, I kind of imagine being sort of a their equivalent of like a hippie new age sort of person. Um, nice, but just kind of like, yeah, everything's cool, guys. I mean, the world's not perfect. Maybe we could do something about it, you know, not sharing the energy and, uh, you know, rage of the rest of the angsty group, but still, you know, being part of them and accepted because she's, you know, questioning the world the same as they are. And, you know, there you go. Uh, I did put in a little bit of color splash background. I don't know. I've been doing that more and more lately. Sometimes it serves an actual purpose. In this case, it was just like, yeah, that looks cool. Done. So, yeah, that's uh, that's Boots' crew. And that was the video. See, this? normally I do two shots. This time I just did one, and I cut in the middle, so it should be seamless. Of course, you'd have to watch it back-to-back -to, -back to know that. Doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, so that's about it. Um, I got more work to do for more days, because this is only day eight. So I'll have to do it for like Indie Today!